It's time for Orchard Skills. The code flow is the most advanced and secure flow in OAuth OpenID Connect. It is also the most flexible that allows a web client to obtain tokens securely. It is split into two major parts, the authorization flow, where the client application redirects to the server the user logs in, and the server then redirects back to the client application after the authorization process, and the token flow, which is a REST API call from the client application to the authorization token endpoint on the server. Today on Orchard Skills, we'll be continuing to utilize the OpenID Connect code flow authorization in Orchard Core. Again, we will use the flow to obtain secure access to the Orchard Core content APIs. In the previous videos, we created Angular and Vue.js client applications. This time, we'll be creating a React client application with CRUD operations, create, update, read, and delete on our custom-defined subscriber content type in the Orchard Core content management system. Please stay with us and we'll get started. <music> Welcome back. As you can see, by just describing our objective, OAuth OpenID Connect can be a bit intimidating, but by learning the basic terminology and seeing some examples, you can eventually master it. In order to utilize the OpenID Connect server, we'll need to configure it in Orchard Core. I believe the fastest way to accomplish this task is through a recipe. Let's take advantage of the material design theme solution we created in a previous video. With your favorite browser, let's go to github.com slash orchard skills slash orchard skills dot orchard core dot material design theme. Click on the code button and let's go ahead and select open with GitHub desktop and also the button open GitHub desktop dot exe and let's hit the clone button. Okay, great. Let's bring up Visual Studio. Okay, let's head over to the material design recipe here. So the first thing we want to add is the GraphQL feature. And next, what we'll want to add is enable the OpenID server, OpenID management, and OpenID verification features. And now let's head down to the end of the file here. And here we want to add the configuration for the OpenID Connect. Add that here. So we want to specify OpenID server settings and test mode enable false, access token format, JSON web token. Authority is the location of our server, which is localhost 44307. Enable token endpoint true. Enable authorization endpoint true. Enable logout endpoint true, enable user info endpoint true, allow password flow false, allow client credential flow false, allow authorization code flow true, allow refresh token flow false, allow implicit flow false, allow logout endpoint true, and then we'll specify our authorization endpoint path to be our server slash connect slash authorize, and our logout endpoint path as our local host connect slash logout and our token endpoint path as connect slash token our user info endpoint path as slash connect slash user info and then we want to set up our authorization code flow and we'll name it open id application client id will say code flow client id redirect urls will be localhost sign in dash callback and also for the post logout redirect we want to specify localhost sign out callback and then we want to allow authorization code flow to true allow logout endpoint to true and then type public and then for our scope which is open id scope put our description a scope to provide api for remote clients display name api scope scope name api resources my recipient and then down here name open id validation settings audience my recipient and then the authority is our server localhost 44307 and that's it that's all you have to do to configure your open id connect settings in orchard core Let's next create the client React application. 
let's go ahead and bring up command prompt and let's change directory to the location where the material design theme is. So in order to create an React application, we're going to use the Create React app developed by Facebook. And we're going to use TypeScript template. So let's issue the command npx create dash react app and we'll call the application react oidc and we'll also specify a switch dash dash template typescript and hit enter let's change directory to the react dash oidc so let's issue a cd-react-oidc. Hit enter. Okay, great. Now let's go ahead and install the OIDC client. And we'll do an npm install oidc-client-save. Go ahead and install the router. Do an npm install react-router-dom-save. And we'll also need the TypeScript typings for that. So let's do a npm install at types slash react dash router dash dom space dash dash save dash dev. Let's go ahead and install react toastify for toast notifications. And that's an npm install react dash toastify space dash dash save. And let's also install the TypeScript typings for that. That's npm install at type slash toaster space dash dash save dash dev. Go ahead and install the Axios library, which is a client REST API library. And we use this library in the view.js. So let's go ahead and issue an npm install Axios dash dash save. And we'll also need the TypeScript typings for that. So that's npm install space at types slash axios space dash dash save dash dev. So let's go ahead and install the enzyme testing adapter for React. And let's also install the TypeScript typings for those packages. npm install at types slash enzyme and also at types slash enzyme dash adapter dash react dash 16 and using dash dash save dash dev. Go ahead and install Rada package, and this is for functional programming. So npm install dash ramda dash dash save. And then we'll also do the type script typings for that package. And npm install at types dash ramda dash dash save dash dev. And then let's go ahead and install bootstrap. npm install react dash bootstrap and also bootstrap with a dash dash save. Then we'll also need the TypeScript typings for the React library. Go ahead and install that. That's an npm install base TypeScript at types slash node types at type slash react at type slash react dash dom and at types slash jest and with a dash dash save dash dev. Okay, great. Let's launch Visual Studio Code. Okay, the first thing we want to do is install the React extensions for that. And let's go down to the extension button, click on that, and let's type React. So we don't want the React Native tools because this is not going to be a mobile application. This is going to be a web application. So let's go ahead and select ES7 React slash Redux slash GraphQL. Select that and hit the install button. Okay. That's installed. So let's go look at our directory structure here and you can see all the files that were created by the scaffolding template. So the first thing we want to do is create an SSL directory so we can put our certificates there. So let's go ahead and bring up file explorer and let's just copy that from the angular example we did. And in the Angular video, it describes how to install the certificate. So please watch the Angular video. Go into the spa directory and copy this. Go into the React directory, material design theme directory. And let's go ahead and paste it here. So now let's go to the package.json file. In the startup script, let's go ahead and add set HTTPS equals true 
ampersand ampersand set SSL CRT file and that'll be to the server dot certificate and also set SSL key file the server private key and that's how you set up your SSL in react so let's go to the source directory here and let's create some directories so let's go ahead and create a components directory and let's create a containers directory let's go ahead and create a helpers directory let's create a services directory okay great okay let's go ahead and create some files here in the component directory let's create an app context.tsx let's go ahead and create an auth context.tsx let's also create a buttons.tsx let's create a headers.txs so let's also create some javascript components just to show the difference between typescript and javascript and how they can actually interact with each other let's create subscriber.component.js let's create a edit-subscriber.component.js let's create a subscriber-list.component.js and let's create a subscriber table row.js and let's take the app.css and the app test.tsx and also the app.txs move that into the containers directory just to keep them all together in a, a directory and in the helpers directory let's create a constant.ts file and in the services let's create an api service.ts and also an auth service.ts and that'll be all our files let's start with the constants.ts file here and here is where we define the sts authority client id client root client scope api root and api content so these are the constants that are set up for like environment variables to define what the server is the client and what what part of open id connect authorization here so our sts authority is set to localhost 44342 our client id is set to code flow client id our client root is localhost 3000 which is our react client application url or uri our client scope is open id profile api and then our api root is for the graphql is api slash graphql for the content api it's api slash content and those are on the server next let's go ahead and look look at the auth service.tx here and here what we're doing is we're creating a class called auth service and basically the user manager class here is derived from the user manager that is from the OIDC client so this is basically a class that utilizes the OpenIDC client so in the constructor we go ahead and define our authority client ID our redirect URIs our silent redirect URI our post logout redirect URI our response type which is code and then our our scope which is our constants.client scope so basically these are the configuration settings that are being passed down to the OIDC client and then we set up our logger log level and then we have a method called get users that gets the user from the OIDC client is logged in which is if the user is logged in and then we have a login process which calls our sign in redirect and then we have a renew token which calls sign in silent and then we also have a sign out redirect next let's go to the api service here and here we we are injecting the auth service here and then we have a call api which is basically a call to the graphql api and then we also have a get subscriber which you pass in an id string then we also have an update subscriber where you pass in the id string which is the content id along with the first name last name and email then we have a delete subscriber which we pass in the id and then we also have a create subscriber where we pass in first name Name, last name and email and you notice that we also have private functions basically that do the actual rest calls here so if we go back up here we have a underscore get subscriber basically set up the token for each of the crud api calls okay let's go into the app.tsx and here we're we're pulling in the, the bootstrap container 
with also the row and column, and then also the create subscriber, edit subscriber, subscriber list, app content, header, and basically this is the main application where we set up our header section and then also the container section for doing our CRUD operations. Next is the app context TSX. So in the app context TSX, basically this is where all the authorization flow is, is defined. So we both pass in through the constructor an auth service, the auth API, and should cancel. And then we have a lifecycle hook, which is component did mount, and this is where we get the user, and if we if we're logged in. And then we have a method is logged in, which basically defines if a user is authenticated. Then we have our call API, renew token, log out, get user, and then basically our section where we render, and that's part of the React code for doing render. So we have a toast notification there, and then we have a button where we define either login or log out, depending if a person is authenticated and logged in. Then we have the authcontext.tsx, and here is basically, we're setting up a, a JSON tree viewer, and this is just for debug information. So basically it outputs JSON for debugging purposes. So here is, is the button.txs. The, these are the buttons that are on the menu here. So we have a login and logout button. And for the create subscriber, so we have a class called create subscriber, and we set up our bind operations for the first last an email. We have an unchanged subscriber first name, unchanged subscriber last name, and an unchanged subscriber email. And then on the submit button where we create the subscriber, we basically create our form here, which is our HTML form. Now for the edit subscriber component, we define our edit subscriber. We pass in through the constructor, the auth service, and the API service. And we set up our bindings for unchanged subscriber first name, last name, and email. And then we have a life cycle hook where we have a component did mount we get the subscriber and do some logging get the user and get access to the token and then we have an on chain subscriber first name last name and email where we're setting the state and then we have our on submit where basically we're doing call to the rest api to update subscriber and then here's our html code here for the form for your first name last name and email and then our, our buttons being displayed to update the subscriber then we have our header section here, and the, the header section, it just displays the nav bar and the logo on top. And then we have our subscriber list component, and basically this is where we, we define the class subscriber list, and in the constructor, we're passing in the auth service, the API service, and on the lifecycle hook, which is component did mount. We go ahead and do a call to the API to basically get our list of subscribers. We set up our data table where we do a dot map where we list all the different contents in the table and process the data through this dot data table here, which is this section of code here. And then for the subscriber table row, we define the subscriber table row. We pass in the auth service, the API service, the deleted subscriber, which we bind to. So this is the HTML code that displays the first name, the last name, the email, and then also the edit link here and the delete link. So when they click on edit, it will call the edit through a route here, slash edit subscriber. It will call the delete function here that's defined up here, which is in the REST API delete subscriber. And that's it. Let's go ahead and bring up Visual Studio and load the Orchard Core CMS web application. And let's go ahead and run this. Click on the green triangle play button. All right, let's go ahead and enter our site name. Let's make sure we select material design theme. Let's put a username in, email address, put in our password. And then let's go ahead and hit the finish setup button. Okay, and log in, go to the dashboard, and let's go down to security and open ID Connect and go into management and applications. And you can see here, here's our authorization code flow. We'll edit that and our client ID is set to code flow client ID. Our display name is authorization code flow. Our type is public client and we have allow authorization code flow enabled. And our redirect URI is localhost 3000 sign in callback.html. And then our post logout redirect URI is local 
localhost 3000. And our consent type is explicit consent. And if we go down here to the scope, and here's our API scope here. And basically, it's our name is API, display name is API scope, description a scope to provide API for remote clients, and then default is set for tenant. And then, and the additional resources, API audience is my recipient. Okay, so now let's go back to the React client. Let's create a terminal and let's do an npm install. Okay, npm install is complete. So now let's do an npm start. And here's our React CRUD client with Orchard Core OIDC running. Click on the login button and see how we get redirected back to the Orchard Core CMS server. And let's go ahead and enter our credentials. Hit the login button, and you can see we get an authorization message. Do you want to grant authorization code flow access to your data? Scope requested, open ID, profile, and API. Let's go ahead and select yes. And there we are. We're redirected back to the React client. So let's go ahead and hit create here. Let's enter a first name, Donald Trump, and hit create subscriber. And there we go. We have a, we created our first subscriber. Go ahead and create another one. And we'll call Joe at Biden.com. So we enter our first name of Joe, last name of Biden, and email is Joe at Biden.com. Hit the create subscriber. And now we have two subscribers. Go ahead and create another one. Hit the create. So we're creating another subscriber. First name, Mike. Last name, Pence. Email, Mike at Pence.com. And click on the create subscriber button. And now we have three subscribers. Let's create another one. First name, Kamala. Last name, Harris. Email, Kamala at Harris.com. And hit create subscriber. There we go. Now let's head back to our Orchard Core application, and let's log back in, go to the dashboard, and click on subscribers, and you can see that all the subscribers are in our subscription list here. Okay, let's go ahead, we, we did create, non, of course we did list, or read, right, in our list here. So now let's go ahead and edit. So let's click on the edit button here, and let's change this to color cami update. Her first name has been renamed. Let's head it on back to the Orchard Core application and let's just do a refresh. And you can see that's been updated too in the Orchard Core database. So the last thing we want is let's go ahead and do a delete. So let's do delete and now she's gone. And let's go back to the Orchard Core application and do a refresh and she's gone. Let's do a delete here. So let's go ahead and select Mike Pence and we'll do a delete and we'll say okay. Okay, now he's gone. Go back here and let's do a refresh and now Mike's gone. All right, great. So last thing we have to do is log out. So let's go ahead and click on the log out button and it says log out. Are you sure you want to log out? And I'll say yes. And then we're redirected back to the application and it says please log in to enable CRUD operations. All right, great. This is all working. Now to recap, we cloned the material design theme solution from a previous video, configured the Orchard Core CMS web application, server OpenID Connect for code flow authorization, created a React client application using the OIDC client, and also configured it for client code flow authorization. Using the React client to log in, we were able to redirect to the server we selected yes to confirm authorization to get access to the Orchard Core APIs. Once logged in and authenticated, we were redirected back to the React client application. The React client application showed the authorized logged in status. We were able to perform CRUD, create, read, update, and delete operations on a custom content type subscriber. Now, if you missed or didn't understand something, that's okay. There's a detailed blog post that describes all the steps. There is also a GitHub repository with the complete source code. All this information is in the video description. If you like this video, please click on the thumbs up icon. Also, please subscribe and click on the bell icon to get a notification when I release the next video. Thank you for watching.